I'm painting, I'm usually thinking of the next stroke. Where is it going to be? Is it the right hue of color? How is it going to fit with the, the overall composition? I see art as art. And the art that is being created in Los Angeles is... There are many types and many currents occurring at the same time. And one of that is the identity which the artist's first intent is to make a statement about his or her identity within ethnic art or art that is defined in, in certain groups, be it Latino or other groups. When I see a, a piece of work, is like, where does it fall in the overall scheme of things? To place my art within the contemporary scene in Los Angeles, I find it hard to do because it is representational and sometimes figurative, but I cannot see what to place it. I see artists that do that, and I said, well, my work is not precisely that, and my brush stroke is not precisely expressionistic, and is it more academic? I haven't been able to, to place it, because in part it's because I haven't been trying to do that. Well, originally they were ambiguous. They were, some people would say that it was the sun and some people would say that it was the moon. And then some people would say that it was male and some people would say female. And it was interesting because most men would say that it was a male and most women would say that it was a female face. And my intention is not to give it a, a connotation of good or bad. And uh, originally started when I first saw one of the monumental Olmec heads that are uh, sculpted in stone. And they come from a very early culture in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, I had seen them all the time in reproductions because, uh, you know, it's part of art history. But when I first saw one here at uh, the County Museum of Art in Los Angeles, it really made an impression on me and then after that I started to make little doodles of the face. And it was because I thought not so much in the person portrait, in the person that was uh, represented or the, if it was a portrait, not in the represented but in the creator of the piece in the person who made the piece and uh, so i'm this close to the rock and i said well this is the space that a creator i don't know two thousand years ago or more had to be at in order to chisel these features and um, that made an impression on me that part of being exactly in the same place that a human being was carving this very impressive piece of, of art. And uh, that's why I started to making them. And uh, originally they were similar to the way the, the old mech heads uh, appear set on the ground. And then little by little uh, they started without me giving that, giving them an intellectual explanation, they started to rise in my artwork and then they became more female. And of late they are more, the features are definitely more female. those are self-portraits and then in this case even though it's not a traditional 
self-portrait. These are my feet that are part of a, of a landscape, part of the coming out of the earth. And then again, this is a self-portrait from 1977. Sometimes it's not the physical output of an artist's work that influences me, but the spirit of it. Frida Kahlo did a lot of self-portraiture, and so did Van Gogh. Van Gogh, and in a different, in a completely different style. He had a very penetrating look into his own self. I guess those are two of the artists that I have wanted to emulate when I do self-portraiture, which is something that I have recurred once and again. Then here, this is uh, Sandra Drenning. It's um, mostly acrylic, but it's all, it also has other other media. And uh, this is a Gronk. These two are Donald Ferguson. These are collages from his early work from '96. That's uh, Frank Romero. Those three dolls. I buy Mar Marcel de Jour. This is Elsa Flores. That is a self portrait by Sergio Vasquez from 1990. This is Delos McGraw. And this is another Anne Chamberlain. And here we have uh, two portraits that Antonio Garcia did of me back in the 90s. And uh, this one on top is Roberto Gil de Montes. And uh, this is a portrait that Alejandro Rosas did of me in 1991. This is a Gronk piece from 95. And uh, because he was doing this for me, drawing on a shirt pocket, he included a city hall in my honor. <laughs> Mario Calvano portrait he did of me back in the 90s, probably in the late 90s, I don't remember. And um, this is a print by Judith Duran. And this and that is our uh, collages by Donald Ferguson. This is a gouache by Anne Chamberlain. And I believe this is a gouache also by Roberto Gildemontes, inspired on a trip he took to India. And this is also Roberto Gildemontes from his place in the tropics in Mexico. And that's one of my early faces. The metal stars are by sculptor Nan Wolman. Well, she's a sculptor and also a photographer and ceramist. And that, those two rusted stars.
wanted to anchor my art making in Los Angeles, especially back then when I started doing that a quarter of a century ago or more. Most people thought of the center of art, the only place where art was being made as New York and not Los Angeles. So being in Los Angeles, I wanted to find a visual representation of the city. And uh, City Hall was the choice for me. I thought of other things like the palm trees, but then they are not native to this land, and surfers and surf culture, but it's not general. And then the City Hall represents everybody in one way or another. And then I also liked uh, that architecture, that uh, period of art that also defined Los Angeles, those early years of the 20th century, that gave Los Angeles um, prominence through movies and popular culture. 